Well, howdy do. Quite often this um, camera device tells me how much time I've got to make a video and um, at this particular time it's not. All it's doing is ticking away so I have a feeling it's going to cut away quite quickly. But given the opportunity I might actually go downstairs where I often make my rants and actually make a rant. So you're welcome to join me. Oh, I won't bother editing this one too much because I honestly think it's going to cut out any minute, any second, any time, any moment. Damn, I didn't even turn the light on previously. So. It's alright, I'll do that when I get down here. I just use my seeing the dark vision. Holy fuck, where am I going? Somewhere around here, I think. And that will do. No. Close, but no. Come on. I'm gonna get it wrong twice in a row, dude. Twice in a row. That's not like me. I might just sit here because it's nice and close. But we can get nice and intimate with each other. Just kidding. So there's been some interesting um, changes lately in the flat earth movement if you can call it that I think we're weeding out the scum like that flat earth asshole <laughs> I mean he's made a good name for himself you know you can't, don't get me wrong there I enjoyed the very first video I saw of him was this one where he did this edited version of some must have been some movie and you know like this woman stole a tape out of a safe and put it into a video player and started broadcasting it to the world and he pops up telling everybody the earth is flat and you know, he did it really well I thought it was a brilliant video and so I'm like yes this dude is good I'm a fan instantly and ever since then all he's done is just let us down again and again and again so good riddance Jake yes you are now the asshole and the flat earth true believers won't miss you at all in fact you've done your work bye so cheers again because Every day is Christmas, as it should be. My biggest thing I've always been talking about, of course, is the moon. One of my very first videos I made, where I called it Flat Earth 101 for ignorant globe heads. How I explained how if you're on a spinning ball going around the sun, you cannot possibly be seeing the same stars every night of the year and the moon itself the moon itself is the biggest it's the biggest clue really when it all comes down to it the moon cannot exist on this spinning ball if the ball itself is spinning at a thousand and forty miles per hour 1600 kilometers just on its axis, spinning around the sun every day. I, I actually did some calculations today because I was arguing with some globe head. If we're going around the sun at 66,600 miles per hour, you multiply that by 24, that's like about 1.6 million miles an hour we travel every day. Every day, it's about 
at over one and a half million miles of distance. I mean, that's just fucking bullshit. Incredible. To go around the equator in a boat, if you can circumnavigate without running into too much land, or say you did it in a plane and you took a perfect circle around the equator, that's about 24 to 25,000 miles. And it would take you, I would guess, about three to four days to do that at the top speed of our best aeroplanes we've got just at the equator. Yet, the Earth itself has moved 1.5, 1.6 million miles million in one day on its little wafting around the sun while it's spinning faster than sound while the sun itself is shooting through space at half a million miles an hour this is the sort of bullshit you have to believe to think you live on a globe. This is the, it's the old wives, or, or, old nursery tale. There was an old woman who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. If you don't swallow the fly in the first place, and you just realise, we live on a flat, stationary, non-moving, beautiful plane, then all is good. All is good. You don't have to worry about complicated nonsense. You don't have to worry about complicated equations. You don't have to worry about gravity. Because gravity only works if you've got dark matter. And then because dark matter is pushing everything away too much more than gravity can compensate for, then you've got to have dark energy as well. So you've got three invisible forces. The trinity of invisible forces, just to explain what doesn't even have to be explained in the first place. Because it's flat and stationary. We don't need gravity, we've got density, where something heavier will fall below something less dense than itself until it finds its level. And then you've got buoyancy until something finds that place and then it stays buoyant. Hit the ground, boom, you're buoyant. Hit the water. If you're made out of lead, you sink. If you're made out of a rubber ball full of air, you're buoyant. So you stay on the surface. Everything finds its place due to density and buoyancy. It's not Captain Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. That's a good word. I just invented another one. It's not rocket science. Okay? It's not. It's what you see is what you get. People ask me then why, if you throw a ball up, what makes it fall down? Well, down is just the observable facts of natural physics that we observe. You don't have to invent a force to explain it. It's just how it is. Air isn't dense enough to support it, so it falls down. Bam. End of story. So getting back to the moon, as I always do. It's always about the moon. The moon cannot possibly keep up with those four unimaginable speeds and things that make no sense on the earth to begin with. But to see the moon gently wafting over us the same way that we might see the sun as we do, it is not at all possible for the moon to keep the same face pointing, facing towards us 
in the heliocentric model. The heliocentric model does not work and every single scientist will tell you that the moon should not exist according to the heliocentric model. In fact, the heliocentric model should not exist if they bother to look into it that far, but they usually don't. But the thing is, here's, here's this really simple analogy. You're walking along at five miles an hour and you've got a fly buzzing around your head and it's staying a constant distance from your head. So the fly now is the moon and it's constantly looking at you. So as it's flying around you, it's always looking at you. So you're seeing the same face of the fly the whole time. Now, you might think that's reasonably logical but as you're walking along at five miles per hour, the fly has to accelerate to get past you, and then decelerate to come back around you, and then accelerate again. So it's doing decelerating and accelerating the whole time. That seems pretty simple. But then all of a sudden you put on your jet boots and you take off into the sky at a thousand miles an hour, and the fly still stays there, it's now not only accelerating and decelerating, but it's still accelerating forwards at all these speeds. Now, then, because you're the Earth, you're actually spinning on your own axis as well at the same time. So as you're spinning at the thousand miles per hour, as you're shooting through the galaxy, or shooting around the sun, sorry, at 66,600 miles per hour, the speeds this fly is now having to do around you in order to appear like it's just gently wafting. It's gone off the fucking Richter. But, wait, there's more. The sun is also shooting through space at half a fucking million. Half a million, yep. 500, 450 to 490. Rounded off to 500,000 miles per hour through space as well. So as you're shooting around it, as it's going through space to fly, is still gently wafting around you, keeping its face pointing towards you. But wait, we told you there was more, didn't we? Didn't we? Yeah. There, there was, there's always more. Because the whole shebang is going around the great attractor. The whole galaxy is travelling around the great attractor, the unseen great attractor, mind you. Maybe it's a great deceiver. Wouldn't surprise me. At, yeah, let's just call it 2 million miles per hour. Because nobody knows. Not a single scientific test in the history of mankind, including the greatest scientists we've ever known, has detected any movement of the Earth. No. Zippo. Albert Einstein, who I think is an absolute shill, but let's not go into that. He declared we cannot, he could not detect any motion or movement of the earth whatsoever. So what did he do? He invented a special equation, the special theory of relativity. Oh. It was pretty special, all right. So special that everybody's been debunking it ever since, including Tesla from the moment he heard about it. He's like, these metaphysicians 
working in mathematics with nothing relative to reality. What we see, what we feel. Do you feel any movement while you're sitting here? Do you feel like you're spinning around at a thousand miles an hour? Do you feel like you're shooting around the sun at 66,600 miles an hour? Do you feel like you're chasing the sun at half a million miles an hour while the sun itself is going around the galaxy at two million miles an hour? No, you feel nothing. You see the same stars, even if they're not in the exact same place every night, but on the same night of the year, they'll still be in the same place. They're always there. They are the ones revolving around us. The sun and the moon are revolving around us. And there's no possible way while well, we're going all those four different, ridiculously impossible speeds that the moon could possibly be appearing to gently waft around us as though it's almost perfectly still. You can actually watch it moving. Watch it, you know. They're still moving relatively fast, but you don't see them having to go millions of miles an hour, same as the stars. You just don't see it. So the next thing I actually wanted to bring up is just something worth mentioning is now all of us people myself, one of my good mates, Alan, uh, Outback Al. Um, he was the first one to bring it to my attention, but then I just saw the email today as well. He said, because we have less than a thousand subscribers and less than 4,000 hours of viewing per whatever, I think it's per month or, I don't know, we are no longer allowed to monetize our videos. I mean, fuck's sake, I think I've made at least two bucks so far and I haven't even cashed it in yet. And now, because, you know, I don't have a big subscriber base, I understand that. I'm not trying to go stupid viral and be some flat earth, Jake asshole type person. I don't really care. I just want to share my truth as I see it. And as many people that find me and subscribe to me, fine. I'm not pushing for it, never have. It's never been a way for me to make a living anyway. But to have a thousand subscribers, I mean, when I hit a hundred, I was stoked. I'm like, wow, I've just hit a hundred. I think I got to 120 at one stage. Now it's back down to about 117. It's like, oh, people come and go. It's no big deal. I don't really care. It's not... I'm not here to um, gain popularity or to, to be, you know, to be anything that this YouTube thinks. You know, if I if I make a couple of bucks out of it, great. You know, we're all here to try and make a living. We all want to survive. Nothing more than that. You know, I spend my time, if you enjoy my time, and you want to, uh, you know, I, I think you should at least be able to appreciate my time, and even if you clicked on an ad or something, so I could gain a couple of cents, to me, that's no big deal, you know, like, great, thank you. And if you really liked it, well, far out, you know, come and invest in a company with me because I'm going to make the bloody ultimate flying machine <laughs> oh, that's fine. still on the top wraps that one um, top wraps is that even a thing I don't know. you know I don't think because it's nearly 2 a.m. here I've been drinking all freaking day I had a good day off I'll have another good day off tomorrow um, looks like I'm going to have a few days off for another six months or so at least. So.
to anybody that does want to pop in a few bucks to me to help thank you I don't really care I mean I do care and I really do appreciate it but I'm not in it for the freaking money I, you know I couldn't care less freaking money what a stupid invention it's useful it's great but it just needs to be shared a little bit more around from the people that have it not from the people that don't have it from the people who are just like you and me out to look for the truth that's all I care about I just care about the truth as far as I'm concerned the earth is bloody flat this whole heliocentric model is a completely made up system and they say that Copernicus this is the funny thing Copernicus was locked up by the Vatican because he was proposing this heliocentric model but you know what it's because he didn't want to push it he didn't believe in it he thought it was a load of shit himself and they said no you're gonna fucking work on this we're gonna make you work on this and you're gonna make a way to make it work so that we can prove everything goes around the sun the most ludicrous thing that ever happened now all these people today that believe in the globe in the in the globe, going around the sun, they're sun worshippers. And you know what the sun is? The sun, traditionally, its true name is Lucifer. Lucifer, the light bringer. And Lucifer is not an evil deity. Lucifer is the light of God. Not God itself, the light of God. And he has 12 constellations revolving around him. And they all relate to the disciples. You just think about that for a while. There are 12 disciples devoted to revolving around the Son of God. So it's all Lucifer worship. And this is what the whole Vatican is all about, is Lucifer worship. It even got to the point where they just had to convert it into Christianity and say, well, let's call the Son of God Jesus. Even though we're going to show him nailed to a cross to everybody and say, this is what you do if you dare stand up to us. We will nail you to a cross. That's how it works. Lucifer worship, heliocentrism, helios. It's it's enough to make a man go to drink. So what does it mean at the end of the day? If you believe you're on a spinning globe, you're imprisoned in your mind by the finite prison spinning ball. Insignificant. Go back to work, slave. Do what you're told. Flat Earth realization is the truth. And we are getting put down again and again and again. I even had a really good friend of mine. I, I, no, I call him a really good friend, even though I hardly know him, but he's the one that's made my profile picture on Facebook. Where my Facebook profile, like so many other people, has been banned for 30 days. 30 days. Why not 40? Make it 40. That would be more biblical, wouldn't it? Anyway, for 30 days, my real Facebook account is down and out. So I've used my other one, Eddie T. Rose, if you care to look it up. I don't care if you do or don't. I don't care. You know, now you know who I am. He told me that the flat earth has now become illegal. Illegal. 
on Facebook. So any of us speaking up for the truth are getting banned, blocked. What what does it become now? Where trying to share the truth, we've got to find other platforms. I tell you, this YouTube it's lost its way. It's it's banning people left, right, and centre. It's and Facebook banning people left, right, and centre. All good people who are all not really doing anything wrong. I I didn't even know why I got banned under my normal account. They didn't even tell me. They just said that I've breached their policies and I've got a 30 day ban. Obviously because some wanker ported me. So this is how it goes. This is this is the reality we're living in now and it looks as though maybe we're just going to have to go down into the dark web. I don't know. I mean my fucking laptop that I use I need to use that now because I'm, I've lost my job and I have to find 20 jobs a month, which don't exist, but I have to apply for 20 jobs per month, somehow out of the imaginary air, and my fucking laptop is now crashed as well. And it's, it was only a brand new one a year ago, which I had to buy to get the job that I had. I needed to to um, get online and uh, you know do all the training that I had to do, all these modules and shit, which I happily did, did them really well, was excelling at my job, but because I turned up to work, hung over one day, they just take it all away from me. So I think there's a bigger picture going on here. They don't like truthers. They're trying to shut all truthers down they're afraid and when they're afraid that means that we're winning we are winning and they're going down and they don't like it and I fucking love it so you know if you want to take me down with you fine but we're not going down we're not going away the flat earth is here to stay